Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to um, look at some further processes on uh, and processing on binary images. And the first one that is very useful for many applications is contours, finding and drawing contours in an image that is binarized. So for that reason here, I have made in Microsoft Paint a test image black and white, and then I convert it to grayscale, and then I threshold it to make it binary. Then I bring it into uh, OpenCV, and I use CV2 Find Contours method, where you pass to it the binary image, and then you need a bunch of other inputs. So the first one is image. The next uh, input that you have is called Contour Retrieval Mode that basically has uh, several methods for uh, you get the contours as well as whether you get the hierarchy or not. And this term hierarchy that you see here is in some images, these um, binary parts, these black and white parts, the white parts, let's say, they are not all at the same level. Some of them are like inside the other ones. So we can call those outside to call them parent or a lower hierarchy, while the ones inside, you can call them children or higher hierarchy. For example, if you only have two levels, then you can call the outer layer hierarchy level zero or parent, and then the inner one hierarchy level one or child, okay? So it also tells you which one are inside which, as well as it returns for you an array that has the points on the contour for each one of the shapes in your image, okay? So this contour that it returns, it's not just one element. As many blobs as you have, there will be the same number of what? Contours here. So if you have five blobs, you're gonna have five contours. And then uh, the next thing is how many points on the contour would you want back? Do you want all of the points on the contour or do you only want some of them? That's where the third input come in. So if you say chain approximate simple means go ahead and remove a lot of redundant points and compress the contour and you do not need to return all of the points. On the other hand, if you say chain approximate none, then it's going to return all of the boundary points, all of the contour points. So here we only return the compressed version and this uh, CV2 uh, retrieval tree, as I said, is one of the several modes of retrieval. If you want to know about it, you can always go to this link I provided. There are four modes that you can uh, get back the contour and the hierarchy. So here you can see them in OpenCV documents, right? You can have retrieval external, uh, retrieval list, retrieval C compression, retrieval tree, and then retrieval flood fill. Actually, there are five of them, not four. So this tree that we are using, it is going to get you back all of the contours and reconstructs for you a full hierarchy of nested contours. Like if you say list, then it gets you all of the contours, but it's not going to return any hierarchy. It's not going to say which one is inside which or outside which, okay? This one, this external, only will get you the outer contours, okay? No inner contours. This one here, right, is going to retrieve all of the contours, organize them into two level of hierarchies. This one will get it into, like, if you have three layers, one inside the other, the other one inside all of them, then this guy is going to only give you two inner and outer. This guy is going to say level zero, level one, level two, and so on. So this is like the most complete one that there is, retrieval uh, with a tree method. And uh, here we're going to use that. So it is going to give me contour and the hierarchy, but I'm mostly concerned with contours right now. My shape is extremely simple. And uh, now I want to draw these contours on the top of the binary image. So I pass to it a copy of my original image. And then I say the number of contours to be passed to it, which contours you want drawn, which color and which line thickness. So here I'm calling for color blue. 
I'm calling for a line thickness of three. And now if you provide a number here, that is going to be one specific contour. So if you say zero, that means contour number one. If you say one, that's contour number two and so on. If you say negative one, that means draw all of the contours. So here I want all of the contours. So I pass negative one. Then I show the image that now on the top of the original image, you have overlaid the contours. And then I wait for uh, the user to press a key so I can close the window, right? So let me show you the first part here. There we go. So this is the binary image that I have two shapes that are kind of similar, right? So one shape has the other, the same as the other, except for this part removed. And I say why I made it something like that. And then I have this kind of V arrow shape or something arrowhead shape. Kind of looks like a face now that I look at it. And you see that in blue color with line thickness two, it added the contour overlaid it on the image. So now you got your contours. And these contours and tracking them are extremely useful for tracking applications, right? When you want to, let's say, track the pose of somebody's uh, gait or hands or face or something like that, this contour is an extremely powerful method. Of course, you have to have good blobs like these, okay? Right here, you see I have filled blobs. If there are cavities inside them, then you're going to have inner contours of... Uh, lower hierarchy or higher hierarchy right with uh, like in, these are levels level zero then you might have level one inside them and so on so these are like extremely good things and of course this is not a real image i artificially made it in paint so uh, let's go over the next one the next thing is so this is creating contour finding and drawing them the next things are moments so uh, once you have a binary image, you can calculate moments. And I have explained in one of my videos under playlist computer vision image processing, I explained the notion of moments as well as the who invariant moments that I'm going to talk at the very end of this video. And uh, moments are, the definition of them is very similar to the moments that we have in statics or dynamics, right? And uh, you can get all of them up to level three using the simple command cv2 moment and you pass to it what one of the contours okay so here i choose one of the contours not all of them i choose contour number two remember zero is the first one one is the second one so i choose contour number two and then i get all of the moments of contour number two right which you can see over here so as you can see it has a bunch of moments right so you have M00, M10, M01, M11, M02, and so on and so forth. You have lots and lots of these that you can see. And then uh, you can even divide your M01, M10, as you know, by M00. And those will give you the location of the centroid, right? And M00 itself is the area of that blob that is um, enclosed by the contour so you see area of the contour is m00 entry m00 and you see that i have provided that over here for you i can add something for you as i said and i can say that's the location of the centroid so i can say that a centroid location for contour 2 is at and then what i need is this guy here right but this one should be one and then i should divide it by what by this one number zero and these guys are not numbers uh, like a float so I use a float to divide them these are not regular float numbers so I cast them to float and then divide them so this is what this is your uh, x bar and then I can add something which is y bar here and y bar this moment should be one this moment should be zero okay so I can add something and as I said that's the centroid location for contour number two and when i say contour number two let me tell you 
which one I am talking about. Okay, let me move forward so we can see it. Okay, so here is contour zero here or contour one. I'm sorry. This is contour one. This is contour two. This is contour three. So when I'm saying contour two, I'm talking about this guy, this uh, kind of eye on the right side. Okay, so I'm talking about this. So uh, let me go ahead and show you the uh, run the code one more time. So it adds that centroid for me. Here. So uh, it says the area of contour number two is 83.03 pixels or pixel squared. And then the location of the centroid is at 284 and 286, which is basically probably some point around here. And since this image is 372 by 489, that 284 4 and 286 for a point here does make sense. Okay, if you want, we can add it, right? We can add a point on the top of that. And uh, we can go ahead and uh, add, let's say, a circle or something there. Let me go ahead and add that also for the sake of um, completeness of the code. Okay, so here I have added it as an extra red point to my next image, which is convex hole. So let me show you that on the convex hole, right? And uh, then I'll go back and um, talk about the convex hole. So that's that point is here. As you can see, I added the red circle right there. And you clearly can see that, yes, it does make absolute sense, right? So uh, the calculations are totally uh, meaningful, as you can see, when I added those numbers for you over there. So I just comment this out, but you know what it is. Okay, the other things we have, you can also calculate perimeters of uh, your uh, contour. You need to pass a second argument, and this is whether uh, it is a closed contour or not. So the second input is true if the contour is closed. It's a closed contour, you say true. If it's not, you can say false, okay? So here you can see also I provided the perimeter that is 376 pixels, right? So these are the moments and perimeter. The next thing is convex hole, which is the polygon that then completely encloses the object. The object is going to be inside it and tangent to it and not getting out of this uh, polygon. So we call it the convex hole. And the command to do it is CV2 convex hole. So you pass a contour and uh, it gives you an array of the points that if you connect together, that will give you that polygon. So what I do here is I create a copy of my original image and then I go and for any contour in the all return contours, right? Remember here, these are all of the contours. I go into each and every one of these contours. I go from zero to length of these contours, which in this case is two. So I go zero, one, two, all three contours. I look at that contour I, I get the convex hole of that, call it hole. And then I pass that hole with my image to what? To the command CV draw contours. The same command that draw contours, if you pass to it the convex hole points, it will draw the convex hole for you. So I say go to this image and overlay on the top of the image the convex hole for contour I. When I say negative one means use all of the points in that contour. The color I'm passing is red, the line thickness is two. So here I'm drawing all of the convex holes in red, and that's what you just saw me doing here, right? That's this guy here. As you can see, these are the polygons, and these are polygons too. Don't think they are circles, but since the number of points is too many, you might think it's a circle. If you zoom in, they are polygons with small sides, so they look like a circle. You probably can see better here, but they are not real circles. It's a polygon with too many sides. 
So these are the convex holes, and they are also good for tracking objects to get an overall estimate of all of the objects, um, basically areas that you might uh, basically have contact with, okay? If you have a collision with an object, you better uh, avoid the contact with the entire convex hole of the object, not just the areas that are white. Okay, so these are also good for tracking objects. Then um, there is this command here that you can apply is contour convex. This is a beautiful command that will give you a, a Boolean value, yes or no, true or false. And if it's true, here I said print the contour is convex, otherwise say contour is not convex, and clearly I'm focusing on this contour here, which is not convex, because I can connect two points in it with a line, and the line is not completely inside the object, so the object is not convex, and you can see here that it says what? If I go ahead and uh, click on a point, then it says the contour is what? Not convex you see so it gives you all of the relevant information okay what else can i do lots of things instead of a, a polygon that is enclosing the object i can have a bounding rectangle sometimes you prefer to have a rectangle and track a rectangle instead of a polygon because it only has four corners not a ton so here you can pass the command cb2 bounding rect rectangle and you pass to it a contour and then it gives you the x and y of the top left corner as well as the width and the height of the rectangle and then using the command cv2 rectangle you can go ahead and draw a rectangle from point x y to the point x plus w and y plus h here i'm using the green color and line width two so it is going to give me a, a rectangle here, which you can see in green color. This is the bounding rectangle for this contour. Now, this rectangle that it gives you is always uh, has sides horizontal and vertical. Another rectangle that you can create is a rectangle that is rotated. And this one has minimum size. Okay, so this rectangle has a smaller size compared to the green one. As you can see, it's a little bit narrower. And this rotated rectangle can also give you what? A bounding rectangle. And for that, what you need is you need the CV2 mean area rectangle, not the bounding rectangle, mean area rectangle. It gives you some points, the corners. And then you can, again, get those corner points and then get the image and go ahead and draw all of those points with a specific color onto the object here. I'm using yellow color. And you see that this yellow color is added onto the top of what? Onto the top of contour number two. Now, I know some of you would ask me, why did you skip over these two lines? Why did you explain them? <laughs> so, uh, at least if even you don't ask me, I'll ask myself, why didn't I explain those? So, I want to explain them before we pass on. So, this command, when you run it, it's not going to give you the four corners of the rotated rectangle. What it returns is the center of the rotated rectangle, the width and the height of it, and the angle of rotation, okay, or the orientation of it. So if you want the four corners, you have to pass those information that you got from the min area rect, you have to pass it to the box point command. This will give you the four corners of the rectangle, okay? And so... These corners are not going to have integer values, but when you want to draw points on an image, they have to be integers because those are pixel locations. So what I'll do, I convert them into integer here. And to show you here, I have provided those outputs. So this is what the rectangle is. This is the center of it. This is the width and height, and this is the angle. Then I use the box method, and that box method will give me the four corners. As you can see, they are not integers. Then I 
use truncation and convert them into integers here and then I use the what I use my draw contour command to add a contour that has those four corners with a yellow color right to what to um, basically on the top of that and that's what I just showed you so here since you have them I'm going to get rid of this prints we don't really need these prints and show you one more time the bounding rectangle and the rotated rectangle for this object where the rotated rectangle has minimum size basically some other definitions that will be useful for you is one of them is called aspect ratio for uh, from the bounding rectangle if you divide the uh, basically width by the height that is called the aspect ratio of that contour the other thing is called extent for a contour extent is the ratio of the area of the um, area enclosed by the contour over what over the bounding rectangle area right so if the object is a rectangle itself of course a perfect rectangle horizontal vertical sides this number is going to be one but uh, the more that that blob is um, filling inside the rectangle, this extent value is going to be closer to one. So you see here, I'm dividing the area of that contour by the area of the bounding rectangle. And also I have solidity, which is the ratio of the area of the convex hole, right? So if you get the area of the convex hole, and the area of the contour and divide the area of contour by the area of the convex hole, you can get what? Solidity. So here again, you see I'm dividing the area of the contour by what? Here I pass the corners of the convex hole, the whole value, this guy here, right? That one. And uh, this command will give me the contour area of that. There is this command called contour area, right? Uh, so you can get your contour area, you can get your contour perimeter as we had in the past, and you can get the moments and then read this value off of the moments. So you can do it that way too, but there is an allocated command called contour area. You see here, this is arc length for perimeter. There is this command that is for an area. So this is called solidity. And aspect ratio, extent, and solidity for that specific um blob here this guy if you look at them their numbers are shown so aspect ratio is 0.96 as you can see it's very close to square and then the um extent is 0.65 and uh, then solidity is 0.97 and it does make sense as you can see you see inside this green rectangle, there are lots of black areas. So there is a lot of the rectangle that is not filled, so 0.65. But if you look at the convex hole of that, that I just did, let us let me show you one more time the convex hole, uh, right? Um, ah, sorry, here. Then you see that for the convex hole, there is only this small black area that is left. The rest of it is white. So, of course, the area of the contour over the area of the convex hole is closer to 1. And this 0.97 does make sense, while the rectangle does not. Okay, so just know about these definitions. If you see them somewhere in a paper or some tracking uh, terminologies, you might, or um, any other, maybe, segmentation and so on, you might have some idea what that paper is talking about. The last two parts that I want to talk about is a minimum enclosing circle and a fitted ellipse. So if your object is not circular, like that V-shape object that I have, then you can fit a minimum enclosing circle to it and draw it, overlay it on the top of the uh, shape. So you find it using CV2 min enclosing circle and you can use CV2 circle to overlay it on the top of the image. And then you can use CV2 fit ellipse to the contour 
and um, that is going to return something called uh, ellipse for you if you want or that contents of that ellipse are five pieces of information the center of the ellipse the major uh, diameter the minor diameter and the angle and what i'm caring about right now here is the angle i want to print the angle for you which is the orientation of the blob okay so that angle is very good if you want to know the orientation of an object right so let's say your part is going to grab something and uh, you want to know the hand of your robot is uh, going to rotate how much to align itself with the main orientation of the object before grabbing it this command is going to be very useful okay this orientation or how much should it open, then you need to open it by major and minor diameters, the um, gripper of the robot, so you can grab it. So this major, minor diameter, and angle, specifically angle, these are extremely useful commands. Okay, so I can pass this ellipse to the command CV2 ellipse to overlay that ellipse on the top of the circle as well for me, and I can use this information, as I said, to show them here for you okay so again you can get the information either as one giant thing that has five pieces of info in it and pass it for drawing or you can break it down into these five pieces and then use any of them that you want and print it here so let me go ahead and show that to you so this blue one is the circle that is the minimum enclosing and this purple one is the ellipse now the ellipse is not going to be enclosing, okay? It's just going to be aligned with the object. So uh, it's not going to be perfectly enclosing, but it has a major and minor diameter that are equivalent to that blob. And so here uh, I showed both of them for you. And then if you look at the angle, it says that, uh, let's see. Let me get you the angle. So the angle is 35 degrees. Does that 35 degrees make sense? I guess it does. If you look at this uh, shape here, right? This uh, major diameter, the angle of that with respect to the horizontal axis, if you draw a line here, that angle is about 35 degrees. So that does make sense. And then the... Uh, last parts that are interesting are matching shapes so if i have two binary blobs or contours and i want to see which two are matching each other better i can use the who moments okay so there is this command cv2.who moments that will give you the invariant moments who invariant moments that are invariant with respect to translation rotation and scale and the seventh one, because there are seven of them. And the last one is also a skew invariant. And in order to get the who moments, you need to pass all of the moments to this command. So you're not going to pass contour this time. You are not going to pass contour. You're going to pass the moments that you already got using the moments command up here. You're going to pass those moments. And then from those moments, it is going to construct the who moments. I have a video, please look at it for who invariant moments under my playlist. So it is going to show you those. And then this command here, CV2 match shapes. For this one, you can pass the contours, the two contours, and then basically ask it to return a score for you. The smaller this score, the closer those two contours are going to be to each other. So here I have the contours for shape 1, shape 2, and shape 3. And then I'm matching shape 1 and 2, and then 2 and 3, and see which two are closer to each other, which uh, let me show you. So clearly these two are close to each other, not these two or these two. So remember, this is 1, 2, 3. So the number for 2 and 3 should be much smaller than either 1 and 3 or 1 and 2, right? 2 and 3 are very close to each other. Correct? So here, uh, you see that I'm going to show those numbers, and you see that between 1 and 2 is 1.7, but between 2 and 3 is 0.05. So clearly, 2 and 3, those two eyes are much, much closer to each other, 
And by the way, these are the who moments. This is the first one, and these are the rest of them, the six. So you have total of seven who moment invariants. So for this command, you don't need to pass the who moments. It calculates it inside it and then does a comparison based on all seven of them. Okay, it finds a metric as a combination of all seven and then it gives you back the number. So if you want, I can add another one here and call it what? And call it the comparison between one and three, right? And call it this and then add one more and I can show you that one and three are also not basically uh, close to each other, okay? It's only two and three that are close to each other in this case, right? And you can see that the other number is 1.69, this is 1.71, this number is 0 0.05. So clearly shapes two and three, which are those two eyes, are very close to each other. Now, uh, you might say, what are these two numbers? I know some of you might ask, what are these two numbers? One and zero, what are these guys? So these guys are called method and parameter for this. And uh, they have a little bit of explanation, which I don't want to make this video any longer than what it is right now. But you can grab this link that I provided here and go to it. And it's going to explain a little bit about the method and the parameter and as it says right now there is no parameter available so that's why here we use zero because uh, basically we are not uh, providing any parameter on it. or actually this one will be ignored it's method number one that is using for uh, calculating basically the um, total score with the seven moments as I said there are several things here right so you see there are three ways to combine all of those uh, moments, all of those seven who moments. How would you combine to come up with a single number? There is method one, method two, and method three. And right now we are using method one, okay? We take a summation of one over each moment minus one over the moment, the similar moment from the other shape and subtract and then what? Basically sum them over all of the seven moments. We are using this method to what to come up with those three numbers that i showed you 0 0.05169 and 1.71 so uh hopefully this video is useful to you i have covered lots of topics here and hopefully you can use them for your applications thank you so much i'll see you in the next video